Hi everyone, so as you can maybe tell, I am back in Spain. I have started this video and done the intro at least 20 times. Not exaggerating, I probably on average film about 15 takes of just trying to start. Once I do, I'm fine, but I just can't start a video to save my life. I get genuine anxiety about just beginning a video and I don't know what it is. Generally, I never do just TBR videos, but as I said in my last video, one of my main goals of 2015 is to pick out my books more critically, to really select ones I am just so interested in. You guys recommended a ton in my last video, so I will be mentioning a lot of those, but keep in mind there are a ton of other ones you guys have recommended I'm going to check out. So at number 15 is The Enchanted by Renee Denfeld. This takes place on death row, and I believe is a magical realism book. The protagonist is mentally ill, so I think that's how the magical elements come in. But Jenny from Adultish Books has been talking non-stop about this book and how wonderful it is, and then I saw Rincey Reads also said how great it is. Then at number 14 is Broken Monsters by Lauren Bukes. The beginning of this story kind of reminds me of True Detective, the TV series, if you haven't watched that stop this video and just go watch it now. There's only seven episodes. But this book takes off when I think it's a young boy is cut in half and then a deer is put on his bottom half. People start calling it the Bambi murder and it's told from multiple points of view of people trying to figure out what happened. It sounds very creepy and wonderful. I've heard kind of mixed things on it, but the premise just sounds so interesting. I know I want to check it out. Number 13 is a book that I know tons of people have talked about and for some reason I still don't know what it's actually about, but that is The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Safon. All I know is this takes place in Barcelona and I'm going to attempt to buy it here and actually read it in its original version in Spanish. We'll see if that actually happens. But I also keep hearing people say that this is just a good book for book lovers in particular. Then at number 12 is a book one of you guys suggested because I said I wanted to read more non-fiction psych books, particularly related to kind of personality. Someone recommended The Lucifer Effect by actually Philip Zimbardo. I didn't, I heard of this book but didn't realize he was the one who actually wrote it. If you haven't heard of the Stanford Prison Experiment, I know they talk about it in every Psych 101 class, so most of you guys probably have. This book talks about that experiment because it's written by the guy who created it, but the book is about how good people can become evil or at least commit evil acts and how different dynamics can force that to happen, but it sounds so interesting, so I think this is definitely going to be one of the first ones that I check out. At number 11 is The Dancing Girls of La Ro, and this was recommended by... Her makeup channel is called Mischievous. She's been one of my favorite makeup people to watch on YouTube for years, and she sometimes talks about books on her other channel. This is a nonfiction book written by a journalist who lived in Pakistan with women who were prostitutes for about five years, and she documents their struggles. I noticed that Julie and I always kind of rate the same books very similarly. So when she gives a book five stars, I definitely trust her opinion. And I read a bit more nonfiction last year than I generally do, so I wanted to kind of continue with that trend. For number 10 is The Magician's Land by Lev Grossman, and need I say more? You guys know what my number one book of last year was. Right now, I'm halfway through The Magician's King. My next video will probably be a review of that. At number nine, I definitely want to read some more psychological thrillers this year because I know, especially you guys guys have been following me from the beginning, that's really what I use to kind of review a lot of. And this is The Magpies by Mark Edwards. I've heard really mixed things about this, but the premise just sounds really, really entertaining. It's about two couples who are next door neighbors. One couple recently moves in and the other couple just starts to kind of mentally and physically eventually terrorize them. The premise I thought just sounded really fun, fun in like a sadistic way. Then is Asylum by Patrick McGarth. This is, this is another psychological thriller. I believe it takes place in an asylum in the Victorian era. It sounds equally terrible and wonderful, but I think it deals with like obsession and romance and mental illness. But we all have our guilty pleasure type books, and this is probably going to be mine. At number seven is basically just anything by Haruki Murakami. I read Norwegian Wood last year and loved it. I own After Dark, so I'll probably check that out. But so many of you guys said not to be intimidated by IQ84's length, and you said you actually flew through it. So I think that might actually be the next one that I look into. So many of you guys recommended Octavia. By so many, I mean like two or three people, but...
or for science fiction. I looked into a lot of her books and I thought, what was it? The Parable of Sour. It's number one in the Earthseed series. I think this is her newest series and this one sounded a lot like The Road, but a female kind of venturing out of her home into the world after everything has gone to hell, kind of similarly like in The Road. But I wasn't really sure where to begin with Octavia Butler, so if there's another book by her you guys would recommend, then definitely let me know. Also, if you guys are wondering why all of my photos I do of books here are like the horizontal rectangle instead of a vertical one, which make a lot more sense, I'm aware. I'm working on a really old version of iMovie because I have an old MacBook and it can't handle the upgrade basically, e even if I was willing to pay for it. So this is the only shape that I can really work with. I understand books are generally vertical rectangles. I just nothing can be done about it. Number five is Dogs at the Perimeter by... I forgot to write down the author. I saw the heavy blanks give a glowing review of this book. I think at the beginning it takes place, it's from a female's point of view, when she is younger and dealing with the political oppression and tyranny in Cambodia. Then it, fa then it fast forwards to 2005 in Canada and her dealing with the uh, kind of mental effects of that could be wrong. At number three, I'm surprised this is the only true horror novel that's really making its way onto my list. So if you have another horror book you'd recommend me to read in 2015, let me know. But this is called The Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. The premise of this kind of sounds like a zombie novel, which I'm generally not interested in, if I'm honest. But the protagonist of this story is a pregnant woman who is forced to kind of live with a bunch of other people in not really a safe house, but just a random home people have kind of gathered in who are trying not to be murdered by the other zombies. I don't know if it would be really considered zombies because from the little blurb I read, the way you're infected is just by looking at something outside and then suddenly you go insane and want to either chew your own arm off or murder someone else. So she's trapped in this home with these other people and I saw Luke Lane Reads give this a really great review and he said it just had a really terrifying atmosphere so this one seems like it would be a lot of fun. And finally at number one, so many of you guys suggested so many different fantasy authors and books. The one that really interested me, I am going to look into others, is someone suggested the author Anne Bishop and then I came across the first book in a series by her called Daughter of the Blood and this came out in the mid 90s and I saw people reviewing it say that it's wonderful and if you like Game of Thrones, it's like Game of Thrones but with witches. And the thing that really interests me about this book is the fact that kind of politically and sexually gender roles are reversed. So women are kind of the ones in power and I've been wanting to read more fantasy so it just sounded like a great combination. So those are the 15 books I really want to check out in 2015. I will have links to the titles and all of their Goodreads pages down below if you want to add them to your TBR as well. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, it really does help, and I'll see you soon. Bye.